Well, this is one of those rare days that Rand and I are doing a news conference together. <laughs> so it's probably in the Bible somewhere as a sign of the end times. But um, we have a different view of a lot of things, uh, united on most, I would say, as Republicans. But our differences are fairly well known. But when he talked to me about this, it made sense to me. Listen, I've been vaccinated. I've had COVID. I, I'll recommend, from my point of view, you get, him, you, you get vaccinated. Uh, the problem here is that we're having a dilemma we haven't had in decades, and that's finding enough people to serve in the military. Our recruiting goals are way short. The conflicts in the world are getting worse, not better. We need more people in the military, not less. And uh, this mandate is going to result in thousands, tens of thousands, of uh, able-bodied Americans who are well-trained leaving the military because they chose not to get vaccinated. Now, I've been a military lawyer most of my adult life. Every military member can't make policy. It's up to the uh, military uh, command structure to make policy. And it's also up to Congress to have a say about how to regulate the military. I think the policy of discharging people simply because they refuse to get this vaccine at this time makes no sense. And I am very much, you've got to follow the rules. You can't take the law in your own hands kind of guy. But we in Congress have the ability to change his policy. So there's two things I want to do. I want to urge DOD to change your policy. It literally is insane, I think, to drive men and women out of the military at a time we have re recruiting shortages because of a refusal to take this vaccine. At the same time, we've had millions of people coming to the country legally without vaccination that are being sent by our own government all over the country. This is not lost on most people. You're, you're kicking somebody out of the military who's willing to get shot because they won't take a shot. And you're letting people come in by the millions unvaccinated. So I think this is bad policy, and I want to change it. The NDAA is always an important bill to me. The goal of the NDA is to give the uh, structural infrastructure for the military to do its job, to make policy, appropriators appropriate money, but the authorizers also make policy recommendations that I think are pretty sound. I will not vote to get on this bill unless we have a vote to change this policy. Now, that's something I've never done before. So it makes no sense to me to discharge thousands of people for whatever reason, and sincere reasons, I'm sure, uh, at a time when we need to get more people in the military, we're having a recruiting uh, shortfall unlike any time that I can remember. And you're talking about thousands of brave Americans who fought in wars, most likely, who've been deployed overseas, and most of them have had COVID. So I'm going to stick with my colleagues here. I want to vote to change this policy, because if we got a vote, it would, it would pass. And um, so that's why I'm here, and I, this is one of those rare moments that Rand and I come together, but he's right on this. Thanks. We spend an enormous amount of money, with good reason, uh, to recruit people into the military uh, for military service. My understanding is it costs about $15,000 in recruiting costs to bring someone in. And it costs 